you had your hand raised. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. I said she worked in the union. Mm -hmm. And, you know, y'all get laid off a lot of them. You know, you work about six or seven, eight months, get laid off, then work again for a whole other company. Because you know it's different companies when you work for them. Mm -hmm. What about that? Have you put that on the resume? <coughs> well, <coughs> that's, a, that's a perfect <coughs> example. Because now you're in a position that it's not the company that you're working for, but you can describe, you can say you were working for a certain contract. So let's say you were working for Electrical Union 101 and you were building one county high school. And your job was to start on this date and finish on this day. So when you're working on your resume, you can say that you were working for this company at this job site, doing this task <coughs> during this time frame. And if there's a period between, let's say between, uh, that's a good question. Let's say the job starts at January and, the, and your contract ends in June. But from June until November, uh, the union wasn't awarded any work. And then in December, you received another contract from December to the following December for a year. Well, if you're sitting down interviewing someone and you see that you've only been on a job for a short, well, a short period of time, let's say six months, but in the construction industry, that's a, that's a nice period of time on a contract. Or if you have a three month gap between two jobs, the question might be, you know, why were you unemployed? And then that, that means you're prepared for the answer that you were between contracts. And then you were awarded. So that just goes back to going, let me see, um, when we discussed last week, arriving to the uh, interview early. Remember what we said when you arrived to the interview early? Do what? Research. Look over your resume. Uh, look over your resume. <laughs> and looking over your resume helps you and reminds you to be prepared for those questions because you know they're going to ask you. Well, I see you've only been working here for a short <coughs> period of time. You had this gap. You started here. So now you can be able to explain uh, what happened, why it happened, and they'll know that you were prepared for your answer, but then also the type of professional person that you are. So did, did, I, did I kind of answer? Yeah, I'm going to have to answer that one. Okay. Did, did anyone else have any questions in regards to the union? I've never had someone bring that up as a question before, but that's a, that's a good question. To, that's, I, I went through that. So. All right, so you want to list your education and training. You want to organize the information. You don't want to have, well, here I worked here from 1993 to 1995, and then I worked here from 19, well, excuse me, 1988 to 1990, and then from here I worked from 2000, 11 to 2012, and you start talking about the type of job and where you work. Is that organized? No. Mm -hmm. no. And also, sometimes if if you work, going back to what you said on a contract for less than a year, you need to put the months that you were there. So January 2010 to June 2010 on this job. And then the next job might be November 2010 to November 2012. Uh, you want to make sure you proofread and revise the information. Just because you um, write a resume in 2010 doesn't mean that the same information is valid in 2012. Raise your hand and tell me one thing that within two years more than likely would change on your resume. Computer. 
Be nothing. Yes, I am a big people. Uh, phone number. Phone number. That's it. How many people have changed their phone number in the last two years? A couple times. So you have to remember, if you prepare a resume, you always have to revise it. Double check your phone number. If there are any, um, if you've been on the job for two years, two years ago, and you're still on the job, now you've been on the job how long? Two and two is four, four years. Now show that you've been on the job four years. So you just want to make sure that you, you, you revise and update your, your information. You want to limit your, your resume to uh, one page. It's easy to possibly lose an additional page. So it's, it's best just to keep everything concise on the one page. Appearance and uh, grammar and spelling are very important. That's what spell check is for. And don't try to impress a potential employer by using words that you don't know what they mean. <laughs> Or can't pronounce. Uh, you want to make sure that you use good quality standard eight and a half by eleven inch uh, paper. White, cream, or off-white papers are good choices of of uh, color. White, cream, or off-white. You want to be conservative. You do not want to use bright colored paper or fancy fonts. Um, you don't want to use a bright color like a yellow or pink because you think that, well, if I use this blue paper and they're looking at my resume, it'll get their attention and they may want to hire me. Uh, what do you think that? Your potential employers want to do if they see a blue piece of paper or a yellow piece of paper or a green piece of paper as a resume. Sky hook it. Right in the trash. Right in the trash. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even read it because the average. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <he> <laughs> but the thing is, you, you should know what colors to use or what not, what colors not to use anyway. So that's why you want to stay with white for paper. Um, your strongest skills should be listed in the okay. beginning. So when you when you're preparing your resume. <coughs> Whatever your strongest skills are, that should be kind of in, in the beginning of it. If there's something that you do that's just miraculous, like you can type 500 words a minute, I wouldn't put that as the last thing on the resume. Because by the time you're reading it and skimming the person's resume, that'll be the last person, that'll be the last thing that they see. So certain things that you do that uh, make you stand will make you stand out from other applicants. You want to put that a little bit to the front. You want to avoid using this goes to English. You want to avoid using long paragraphs. Is she leaving? I I go back and ask her something. Use active words and measurable criteria. You want to proofread, 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 and then get someone else to proofread for you. Have you ever prepared an email and you looked over it, and you looked over it again, and you sent it, and you went back and looked at it, and you saw a mistake? Mm -hmm. We all do it. One trick to proofreading is to read it backwards. So,
let's say this is a sentence. These are eight words in a sentence. And you read it this way, and you read it this way, you read it this way, and everything looks good. If you're reading your resume or if you're reading a letter, actually just read it backwards. If you read it backwards, sometimes you'll, it forces you to slow down. Because who can recite the alphabet backwards fast? You can go forward really quick, but backwards is hard to do. So when you read backwards, it forces you to slow down, look at each word for a mistake to see if you spelled it incorrectly. Um, on, I'll, I'll jump back to uh, something I was going to ask you, Scott. But it's avoid using long paragraphs. What would be your definition of a long paragraph? So you want to avoid using long paragraphs or run on sentences. Mm -hmm. You want to be prepared to answer any gaps in work history. So that was one of the things we discussed earlier. Uh, that's why it has to flow. The dates have to be organized. So if you graduated high school and then went to college and then left college after your sophomore year and went to work because there was a family emergency and then you went back to college for another year and then you worked part time and then you went back to school and finished and then you got a job. I mean that jumps around but as long as you have it organized in your resume and you can explain it, that, that, that just shows uh, organizational skills. and. An employer wants to hire someone that's organized. And, and that goes back to the grooming. If you are dressed neat, if you're dressed organized, it just sends a, a message that you are an organized person. If I come to an interview and I have my resumes folded in my inside pocket <laughs> compared to having it in a folder, a manila folder, I mean, you get these for, what, five cents? I went in there one time, I didn't like it, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pull it out of your pocket. Yeah, you pull out your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great you had a resume, but it's all a presentation, right? Yeah, I like giving analogies. Imagine you go to a, a very nice, expensive restaurant like Bruce Chris Steakhouse. You order a steak, and the steak costs twenty-five dollars, and they bring it out on a paper plate with a uh, <laughs> plastic fork and knife. <laughs> it could be one of the best steaks that you've ever had, but it's the presentation, and that and that's what, that's what's important about preparing yourself for a job interview. Your attire is you're presenting yourself. Your resume is you're presenting. Uh, your work history. So if your resume looks good and you look good, and you're able to go in and have uh, good manners and, and be polite, a lot of times that you'll be successful in your job interview. A couple things and we'll finish up this section. You want to, you don't want to list personal information such as your age, your sex, your race, your weight, your height, your marital status, how many children you have, that's irrelevant uh, to the position that you're applying for. And the last thing is, you do not want to attach a photo to your resume. I don't care how fine you think you are. Uh, attaching your glamour shot to, to the resume it's not going to get you high. It'll get an air ball. I just yeah. did it a little yeah. while ago. Yeah. So before we, we wrap up, did you have any questions uh, in regards to uh, resume writing that we discussed today? Yeah. I got one. Um, when you come here, like, if you're going to have a good one, do you plan on having a
question because an easy way to answer it is it depends on how many jobs you've had. If you've had if you've had two jobs in, in your entire life, that's as far back as you can go. But if you've had uh, let's say fifteen jobs, if you started all these say waiting tables and doing this and working here and twenty jobs. Uh, you may want to go back to a certain point where they deal with the type of position that you are applying for. Mm -hmm. So if I'm applying for a school teaching position here, I'm not going to go back to when I was 16 years old and not uh, work part-time pizza now. <laughs> you understand? What I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I go back. I go back as far as it's, it's relative to what I'm applying for. Right. Any other? Any other questions? I, we gotta like wrap it up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna have one of the said about him. I would only do like the two I had the longest. That's it. Well, the the problem with that is because the two you had the longest more than likely there's going to be a gap between those two. You can't say I worked here for two years and I worked here for five years and one was in the 80s and one was in <laughs> I'm like, where were you the last over the past 10 years? Did you, did you want to see him out? Yeah, where exactly. were you last 10 years? <laughs> okay, last question. Um, should, I, should I use my um, cover letter to fill in any gaps? Your, your cover letter? Yeah. To fill the gaps in? Yes, but you I should be putting it in, in like a cover in a cover letter. What do you mean by that? Um like recognition. Okay, a cover letter's job is is to introduce the reader to the resume. That's what the job is. The cover letter is not a biography. The cover letter is just re briefly sharing some information about what they're going to be. So that's really what it is. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.